Uh, I can already see a massive giant swell for a change. Anyway, have to have a go. This is why I can't jump off the front. There's these crazy waves smashing into everything. Look at this thing. You jump in front of that, you'll be straight back up on the rocks and smashed. I got my sneaky little gutter to get out past this stuff. Hope there's some fish. It looks a bit green. Well, I've got out to my spot, the water's just got dirtier and dirtier, um, just crazy fish going off, big banging around on the bottom. I haven't colour corrected this so you can see what the viz was really like from my perspective. And again, the GoPro makes it look a little bit better than it was. Anyway, I'm on the way up and I've just turned my camera off just before I hit the surface and I seen a Spanish out to the left and then it darted off and grabbed a bait fish. So I dived straight back down again after a quick breath and this is what happened. I was watching the Spanish from the surface and he just darted off and grabbed a bait fish just at the edge of my visibility uh, just as I was making my dive. Here on the left of screen you can see a little bait fish the Spanish coughed up straight after I shot him. I went really hard on the fish, I was very confident of the shot placement that I was going to hold and I could hear all these crazy things thundering around the bottom out of sight and I thought it's very very sharky, I've got to get this fish in, process it as quickly as possible and uh, head off and take what I've got. You can see my shot placement is right between the anal fin and the dorsal fin. This is the strongest part of the whole Spanish and gives you the best uh, holding shot, especially if you're a little high or a little low, it'll uh, still hold in. My technique for landing Spanish is to get your hand around the tail wrist and hold it really tight. And I usually shake for a few seconds very hard and just hold it. And then when, as soon as it stops shaking, slide your hand up the body into the gills, being careful not to go too far and get into the back of the mouth and maybe get bitten. I swam straight back to the shore, keeping the Spanish right next to me, um, holding it in the gill so in that wash that the mouth doesn't wash up and hit me in the leg or anything like that because it can give you a very nasty nice coat. Very bad visibility, 4 metres visibility. Anyway, happy days. 
got one. We finally got some nice beautiful blue water and the swells backed off. See what happens. It's not the best time of the month for Spanish, but we will see. I'm checking my good uh, Jew gutters, but the chance of a Jew being in them is pretty slim. Late February, they're pretty much gone by now. But there has been a big resident Moses perch that I haven't shot because I don't want to spook Jew. But uh, since I'm sure there's not any Jew, he's in a bit of trouble. This Moses perch was one and a half kilos, which is a good size for our neck of the woods. Lovely big Moses. It was so nice to have crystal clear water by our standards. And also to have lots of fish hanging around, Samson fish, GTs, uh, all sorts of things. I saw this mackerel coming in from miles away over the sand because it was so clear and I thought it was a shiny mackerel when I first saw it and just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then turned into a beautiful 15 kilo Spanish. shot was just a little bit lower than I'd like so uh, I decided to be a little bit more cautious with this fish and then, anyway I lit the burners and took off eventually got me right back to my float and I was swimming very hard to keep the pressure off it um, but fortunately it decided to turn once it felt a little bit more pressure
I hadn't seen any sharks, I had good visibility all around me, I just didn't feel sharky, so I, I really let this guy run. I didn't want to risk losing him. patient on this last little bit of the fight unless of course there are sharks harassing you and then you've got to be a bit more brutal and take the chance of pulling out and get the fish right into you. I also saw this lovely calm school of dew milling around in this big crack. Um, there were no really standout fish here. You can see the size of the blue groper next to them. Uh, they weren't very big dew. Anyway, I wasn't going to shoot a small dew. I'll let them grow up and try to get them when they're a trophy size. Here's a couple of small dew, probably wondering where the rest of the school is. You can see how relaxed they are. I wish the uh, 30 kilo ones were like this. Here's probably the same school of jewfish, or maybe another small school of jewfish slipping out of one of the gutters, and then I uh, spotted a beautiful little purple cod. Not big enough really to shoot, but uh, such a pretty little fish. Just before I got back to the beach, there was this cagey little mangrove jack zooming around, and uh, didn't manage to get a shot off at him, but. Uh, Anyway, what a fantastic dive. It was such a nice change to have beautiful, clear, warm water and some really quality fish. Awesome, thanks mate. All right.